Hello my friends, it's me Karen Valentine and I am back to do another uh, video for you. This time in one of my favorite coloring books. She actually has six now. I had owned three and I recently purchased the other three because um, it would just break my heart once I finished all the books and I didn't have any more to color in. So these books are by Linda Ravenscroft. And the whole entire book is uh, grayscale. And the paper in this book is like, is like heavy cardstock. And it's fantastic for doing water media, particularly... Um, I like to use my ink tents pencils um, or ink. Well, we'll go into we'll get into that whole thing in a little bit. But the ink tents um, works great in these in these books. And um, I actually just finished this one, and I enjoyed doing the um, the purples and the greens so much. I decided that's what we're going to do on this one too. So, we're going to do her face first. Um, I like to use a combination of ink tents and Prismacolors in these books. That's what I did on this one. Um, the sky was Prismacolor. Um, her dress was a combination of ink tents and Prismacolor. And her skin uh, was Prismacolor or Prismacolor and Luminance, which is kind of my go-to's for skin. So that's what we're going to do on her today. We're going to do her skin first. Um, and I do that because I want to try and do something to prevent the ink tints from accidentally touching her skin um, when I'm working. And if there's a layer of, of um, pencil wax on her skin, then it's easier for me to come in and just wipe away any, <clears throat> any um, of the ink that might get on her skin. So um, I will go into the whole ink tents sort of tutorial thing um, as far as that goes on um, the next video, which is when we'll probably actually break out the ink tents and start working there. So yeah, so let's get started. So I am going to use a combination of um, Luminance and Prismacolors for her. And um, yeah, so I guess we'll just get to going. I'm going to start with um, Burnt Sienna in the Luminance. Let's see, I can probably zoom in. I'm gonna work on her face first. So we should be good to um, to do that and not get and not get out of frame. So So this paper is a little bit more textured than the paper that I normally color with. But it stands up to a lot of abuse because <laughs> it's so nice and heavy and thick. Okay, so the shadows are definitely coming in from the right. Um, <laughs> and as I say that, because I'm looking at this shadow thinking that it's these leaves, then I come down here and look, and the shadow is falling out, out here. So I... <laughs> um, 
So I guess we will just, I guess we'll call it, we'll call the shadows coming in from the upper, um, upper right corner and we'll do it like that. Even though it's grayscale and all the a lot of the shadows have been put in here, I still feel like um, there's some contouring that we can do with in her face. I'm covering the gray shadow on her face because I really don't want it to be gray. And I would rather it be warmer than that. We're still in frame. I'm just going to go ahead and keep working this. So on this one, you've got the shadows that the leaves and everything are casting. But what I'm putting in here now are the, are the darker tones that are going to help um, give her, her shoulder some rounded look, some dimension. So she doesn't look flat. And even though the shadows are the light sources coming from this side, not that there is that much light because it looks like the background is pretty dark, um, I still want to round out her, her shoulders by putting those darker areas in there.
And I think before I go any further, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to make some changes to her eyes a little bit with my pencil. Um, Linda likes to, when she does her eyes, they she kind of like doesn't, I don't want to say she doesn't finish them because that's not really true, but um, there's not a, a, a definite defined eye here. So I'm going to put that in. funny because it looks like one eye is way smaller than the other. And I don't know if that's my doing or just the way that the eye I think that's just the way the eye looks because it's further back. I don't think there's much that I can do about that. So we're going to leave it. All right, so. I think I'm gonna add some shadow under her eye. Okay, let's put down some luminance, burnt ochre, 50%. You know what I didn't do is put much contour uh, where I'm giving her a cheekbone. Let's go back to Burnt Sienna. I think this is 50%. Yep, Burnt Sienna 50%. And let me just put some in here. and the burnt ochre 50%.
Oh, I haven't done anything on the nose. Burnt Sienna, 50%. Okay, so the way she had this drawn, there was really only one nostril showing, and this was all like nose, but I feel like, I mean, the, the other nostril wasn't showing, and I feel like the other nostril needs to show. So, That's how I'm going to draw it. Okay, let's do it. I'm debating. I do that a lot. I'm just trying to decide if I'm ready to add the light peach yet. I think so. All right, I'm going to start on the outer edges. with a slightly heavier hand. And I'm going to, as I work my way into the center of the face, get lighter with my pressure. circular motions. I'm 
we're not really we're not really blending yet or doing any kind of burnishing yet because we still have a lot of layers to go so <clears throat> on in these books some of that paper is definitely going to still show for a little while and it's going to look a little lumpy Definitely do uh, use more prismas on this paper. Let's go ahead and take some prisma white. Throw that down the center of her nose, right on the ball, and right on the top of this outer part here. And I'm also thinking I'm going to go ahead and take my black. It's just going to be tiny on that side, just a little hint of the nostril, I think. down here. And I'm actually thinking, even though there's no, Linda didn't give us a shadow, I still feel like there would be a heavier shadow since these shadows are so pronounced. It feels like there would be something a little bit heavier under her chin as well.
as far as these books go, <clears throat> you can only get them on Linda's website. And I will try very hard to remember to put a link in the description box underneath. But <clears throat> being that I was in the US and she's in the UK, um, shipping for one book costs the same as shipping for multiple books. So when I did this the first time, I was a little bit too, <laughs> turns out I was a little bit too cautious because I wound up buying all of them. But the, for the first go round, I bought three instead of buying one. And that actually made the cost per book um, go down quite a bit because I was only paying shipping once instead of shipping each time I ordered a book. And turns out I love them. So <clears throat> when she um, announced her sixth book, actually I think it's it's actually number seven because she did she did a um, a zodiac book as well, but this is number six in the fairies and fantasy art series. Not this, but the book that she came out with was number six. And I had originally ordered one, four, and five. And I just finished ordering um, two, three, and six with the full knowledge that it may be a while before I get them. Although Things are running at about a month, about four weeks from the UK to Arizona. And so, you know, it could be five weeks. But eventually it will get here and then I will be a happy girl because I won't have to worry about them going out of print and me not ever being able to get them. That would stink, so... I don't have a humongous coloring book collection like some of you guys. I've seen the videos. I know how many coloring books you guys have. Um, it's probably kind of pretty small compared to what many of you have, but the ones that I do have, I really, I really love. My, uh, my one year coloring anniversary is going to be coming up in the middle of next month, middle of July. And so I thought maybe for that, I would um, show off my colored pages since I started from beginning to, to current. Um, it's so fun to look back and see how you've progressed and how your tastes have changed because my tastes have totally changed in what I like to color from when I first started. Although when I first started, I really didn't know what was out there and so I went with what I could find. And then the more and more I got into coloring, the more I discovered and realized there was a whole other world of coloring that I did not know about. And once again, I forgot a body part. So <laughs> let's go back and get her hand um, done. That seems to be a thing with me, forgetting body parts. Anyway, so I thought it would be fun to, to show off um, what I've colored so far, and um, I had one gal, and please forgive me, I cannot off the top of my head think of who it was, but I had one gal, one gal ask, you know, said she was curious about how I got started and my background and all that stuff. So for that 
anniversary video. I'm gonna, that's what we'll do. We'll have a little, that'll be a fun one with no coloring pressure. <laughs> Got a whole list of videos that I want to do. Things I want to show you. We'll get to them one by one. All right, something about how I did that looks funny. I, I'm not sure what. I don't think there would be a lot of light down here. Maybe that's what it is. All right, let us add I think I want hmm I don't have it out, so I have to decide if I want to do buff titanium or if I want to do brown ochre 10% or if I want to do eggshell in Prismacolor. And for some reason, it's not in my book. And it's not on my table. So where is my eggshell Prismacolor? I don't know. Let's try... Let me just see what the... I think the brown ochre will be fine. We want to take away some of the super peach and bring a little bit of yellow into her skin. Do really like combining the prismas with the luminance for skin tone. They um, each have some colors that the others don't have and when you combine them together they make a really nice tone.
peach down right here. We, don't you like how I include you in my mistakes? So noticed when I was watching videos back that I sigh a lot. <laughs> it's not a sigh of frustration. I think they're sighs of tension release. So there you go. Now you know why I sigh a lot. <laughs> okay, before. Before I do the blending, I want to add, I'm not sure if I want, if I want this pink or if I want the Prisma pink. So these are my choices. I think I'm going to start with blush pink. We can always go a little bit darker if we need to. Um, I'm debating because I, I have some definite darker tones that I want to put around the outer edge, but I don't want them to be blended away and softened too much with the white that I'm going to use now. So I think we'll put those on after. So I'm going to use Prisma White now. And I'm going to start in the areas that I definitely wanted white, white, and work my way out. I don't know if you can see how much like smoother that just turned that skin. And there's enough tooth on this paper, I believe, that I can still go in and do a lot more color on the outer edges and be okay. Probably even some darker contouring of the nose still.
All right. Alrighty then. Okay, so I'm missing some colors. I thought I was so organized. on my other table so I'm gonna go grab those and be right back okay this is this is the fun part for me where the the face really starts to um, I don't know take on some personality adding these other colors so this is grade lavender and we're going to add some even darker purple on the outer edges. Especially since we're doing purples in the, um, the rest of the page. I think it'll look pretty. I forgot to do this. Blend her ear out. heavy handed right there but I think it'll be okay Great lavender kind of goes in the shadows, and I just really love what it does to the skin. And it makes it so much more interesting. Alrighty, I would like some. I think 
I want a little bit more of this burnt ochre. Okay, so this is going to be, <laughs> this is black grape. And hopefully it looks really cool. I'm gonna go super light right here. There, I'm barely touching the paper. I really like this. I'm going to use my Caran d'Ache Full Blender. And blend this all into the skin.
I want to work on her eyes so badly. They just, they look so flat. This right here is bugging me. And I'm hoping I can fix it. It's, it's not terrible. It just looks a little bit kind of uneven. And I don't know. If this will fix it or not. Might make it worse. It's like there's this weird white spot there. So this is the burnt sienna. a little bit better. I think we're going to go with that. <laughs> if I work it too much, I might mess it up. I like it. Just a tiny little bit in her cleavage. All right, what do I want? I want some espresso. I feel like that didn't get blended yet. So. Instead of using the um, full blender, I'm going to use the light peach, which is the skin color. And that's just blending out that purple grape that I did. And... Now I think I'll take some espresso. And again, when I'm working on skin tones, when I use these dark colors, the lightest touch is all you need. And I am going to blend. feel like there's too much white showing there. Mm. This is... You'd think that I would know these Luminance pencils by heart by now, but I don't. Burnt Sienna, 50%. Prismas, I can usually pick 
them up and spout off the, co the color quick and easy, but for some reason. All right, I'm just blending a little bit more with my white. That chin line felt a little bit too harsh. So now it's a little bit more soft. And I still want some more definition on her nose. Oh, and I wonder if I probably should use peach rather than light peach and rather than this light umber. Again, thinking, thinking. Yeah, I think peach. Okay, let's get out that. And I... I don't know why peach. Maybe I should use the luminance. One never knows until one tries. Right? The luminance is just a little bit darker than the light peach. That might have been a good choice. That was the Burnt Ochre 10%, which is the other pencil I use all the time for skin. All right, let's use that also for that line. I still feel like I want some more, but I don't know what. Sienna Brown, break out the espresso.
almost time to do eyes and lips. A lot of the times when I'm looking at skin and I'm going, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like it. Is it enough? It's it's only because the eyes and lips aren't done. And once I do those, it, it all falls into place and looks a lot better to me. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do some lips. Got some white. Personal color nectar. Her lips are really dark in, in this particular case. I'm debating. All right, let's let's do the Tuscan Tuscan red. And I could be totally wrong in this, but I'm going to try some black grape. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. You could ruin the entire page. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to break out my white again. I'm going to call those done. I do want to add a little bit more shadow under her lip, though. Mm. Something doesn't look right. It was good before I messed with it. White. There we go. I'm stopping. <laughs> don't, don't mess with it. All right, let's do some let's do some eyes. Um, OK, 
Okay, so purples and greens are going to be the colors for everything else. Should we do green eyes or purple eyes? Um, let's see, I did brown on those. Let's try a really dark green. I could use ink tints for that, but I'm going to try having a little bit more control. That's too dark. Um, um, and I don't like moss green, so we're not going to, I mean, I like it, but not for her eyes. So, no to the luminance. So... Why don't I have any of my pencils where they belong? All right, let's try Prussian green. We can always darken them up. I don't think darkening, darkening them will be an issue. <laughs> They're pretty dark. All right. Spur Farben Black or Prisma Black. Or if you wanted to, you could use like a... Um, Prisma uh, Verithin because they're really hard and skinny. Um, you know, before I do this, I'm going to use some blush pink. Right in there. And I think burnt ochre 10%. Right there. And Let's do 30% cool gray. That's the shadow that her eyelid would cast. Just a tiny little bit in each on each side to make the ball look more, the eyeball look more round. All right.
The other thing I think is bugging me about her face is those eyebrows are way too thin. So I'm going to decide, I think we're going to do brown, brown hair. So let's use espresso on her eyebrows. Oh, you know, I'm debating on getting out my Vera Thins for this. Let's see. All right. <laughs> I normally have no problem at all sharpening. I might have I might have dropped that one so it was being difficult. Okay, let's try the espresso. I like the color, but I do think I'm going to go get my Vera Thins to get a little bit more definition. And I feel like I want her to have a little bit heavier darkness under her eye. I should do something pinker. Yep, that's better. So that's blush pink. For that waterline. Whoop, I got a little bit too high up there on her. On the white of her eye. I wonder if I can Yep, that worked. And actually a little bit of a little bit of pink actually on the eyeball is probably correct. I like that. I'm trying to see what is happening here. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, I want a little bit heavier pink though. So we're gonna use Prisma Pink. That blush pink just faded out a little bit too much. That's better. That did not blend very well, so 
I don't think I want to add white because I think that'll make it too light. So, blender pencil to the rescue. I am, I am quite happy with her. Do I need to pay some more attention to that hand a little bit? Maybe. It doesn't feel as rich as the face. So, did we give it any purple? Black grape. I think it's going to need some espresso, too. This is the burnt Sienna 50%. Just right along the edge. This is my Prisma Blender. No idea why I pulled that one out instead. It doesn't soften things quite as much. All right, and just a little bit of espresso and I think we'll be done with her hand. I'm just kind of staring at it here pretty pretty good and looking to see if there's any thing that needs to be fixed that I missed. Anything that I want to add. I might regret this, but I just I wanted to darken that just a tiny little bit so I think I'm gonna leave it Okay. 
Oh yeah, I was going to get my bare thins, wasn't I? And see if I can make those brows even a little bit more, a little bit thicker and a little bit more defined. So the Prismacolor Vera Thins are super hard <clears throat> detail pencils. So let's just see, this one is dark brown. They don't lay down a whole lot of color because um, they're so hard. So I'm not sure if this is going to um, even do anything. They probably would have worked better had I not laid tons of pencil underneath them. See how close I can get in here. I'm not sure that these are doing a whole lot other than scratching away the wax that's that's already there. They just aren't the right thing for this so I'm just putting my espresso back in where I felt like they scratched off and this this is good enough I think this is good all right I think I'm pretty happy. I might need to do a little bit more. I mean, the shadows, the, the shadows that the clothing and the leaves and stuff cast are already here, so they're kind of sticking out through the pencil. So I don't necessarily need to add them in, but Part of me feels like I want to give her a little bit of shading from the shirt, from her, from her top, right there. There would probably be some under here. And I'm not sure which side of the strap if the light's coming from up here, I'm not sure. It would probably just be really, really close. So we won't worry ourselves too much about that, I think. And maybe just a little bit darker. We really made her, her cleavage is quite bright. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite white. Like the light is really shining on it. Um, it might be too late for this. I've added a lot of white already on top of it.
Well, I am very happy. I think this looks good. And I'm excited for the next video because I'm really excited to kind of show you guys how my technique for using the ink tense pencils. Because it's a little bit different than what some people probably would do. So I think we're done for today. That was much less stressful than the last video. <laughs> I don't know if you guys watched that train wreck yet or not, but um, anyway, so this was fun. I enjoyed this very much, and I'm looking forward to the next to the next one where I can show you the ink tents. So thank you so much, guys. As always, it's been a huge pleasure to um, to make these videos and and virtually hang out with you. So until I see you next time, have a wonderful day. Take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and I will see you later. Bye.